speak up again. Alright, so what movie did we just watch, Adam? Chef, my, 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 my friend. Chef. I think like 10 minutes into the movie you didn't know what we were watching. Because you were did not. looking at your phone during the credits. And then I told you, oh, we're watching Shaft. And you said, what? <laughs> so you just actually never heard of it. No, I, so surprisingly, I've never heard of this movie or its Predecessor. original film. And that's very shocking to me. Yeah, I typically like John black Singleton movies. Film. John Singleton, you know, the black John Hughes, the Hughes brothers. It's a, no, seriously, it's the Hughes brothers. Menace to Society? You ever seen that movie? Okay. Yeah, I think you showed me that. I call him the Black John Hughes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shaft was a... I think it was like a trilogy, the original films. And are you serious? It was like a big black exploitation thing. Yeah. Why are we not watching all that shit? <laughs> I don't know. I should get him on VHS. I just That's like how way. immediately... When was, this, when was this movie made anyway? 2000. You could tell that it's a 2000 okay. film. Th- this movie reminds me of a lot of... Uh, urban films of the early 2000s, such as uh, Paid in Full. How so? Well, it has a Mackay Pfeiffer in it, for one. It just has that, like, gritty, like, I don't know, like, fictional gangster story feel to it. Except... Uh, like, like kind of like Training Day almost, but Training Day was like Training Day. They were trying to like make Denzel like likable and menacing at the same time. Well, I thought you were gonna say like the way the movie was filmed with, which maybe this was one of those last movies that was still filmed on film because everything's digital now. But well, it, aren't it does all have John like Singleton a, films filmed that way? Possibly, but I just mean like, uh. Kind of like the first Ninja Turtles, like the city feels like a city. It feels grimy. It feels yes. like you could feel like the brick and like the I don't know, like the asphalt. Like it's that just... that makes more sense because mm. it it has that like look that movies used to have. Yeah, that they don't modern movies, anymore. even movies that are filmed in a city, don't have that feel to it. It's so hard to describe. But modern yeah, movies that... don't look good. They're not appealing. But, um... They're too real-looking. I'm actually surprised this movie isn't officially called Shaft 2000. Because a lot of movies in, that came out in 2000 were called So-and-So 2000. Like, everything was 2000, yep. 2K, whatever. Because this is very much like a 2000 film. Uh, everyone, like... Even his design, he's wearing a long black leather coat. You know, it's like yep. the X-Men black leather, you know, the Matrix black leather. <laughs> you know, that's... And I'm it just, surprised they didn't have a trench coat mafia. But no, what I like is the movie still kind of tries to retain some of that black exploitation feel. Like it has that, like it has Isaac Hayes come back to sing the song. Who that's the voice of <laughs> Chef from South Park, if you didn't know. Oh he's, yeah, I know. He's I famous know he for is. singing the Shaft song. But you know, you I know once in a while you're like, why is the music? Why is it all like jazzy or whatever? I'm like, that's that's like a staple of Shaft. But it did seem weird. For the modern version, because it's like, well, Samuel Jackson's not uh, Richard Roundtree. It's not the same feel of it. It's, mm-hmm. it's weird trying to blend it, but they they tried. Samuel L. Jackson doesn't have the presence that he needs to to fill this character. He's not he's not a smooth criminal. He's a harsh cop, and you feel it. It's not like. You said the other guy that was supposedly his uncle. Yeah, that's the original chef. That guy has more of a smooth feeling to him. Like, he could be a criminal and more likable and, you know, more disagreeable, but not, like, be perceived as a bad person. Well, the one thing I mean, I don't see, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see Samuel Jackson as, like, like a sex object. You know, like, I don't see, like... Smooth talking, kind of sexy, like all so. The you know the the fact that you pointed that out that was n- that wasn't even on my mind because of but the way he played that. that character. Yeah, that's an aspect of Shaft. Like he's a womanizer. Yeah, this guy is not. Samuel <laughs> Jackson is not a. Everything womanizer. else he did fine. I like his whole, you know, play by his own rules. Um, I like how half the movie he is a cop, and then the rest of it he just, um, he's the vigilante essentially. So yeah, this movie starts with. Uh, Christian Bale's in the movie, which is another reason why I wanted to show you, because, um, 
Christian we're, Bale has some bad movies, man. We're gonna do our Harsh Times <laughs> review one of these days. But that's like... Found the blood! I think we quote that movie like every other week. But he plays basically what I said. Uh, I said this was Bruce Wayne, the Lost Years, or just the alternate version of him. This is like... This is like American Psycho without the allure of a psycho. I was gonna say, there's like American Psycho, Harsh Times, and Batman Begins. Like, his characters <sighs> mixed together to create one terrible character. But basically, the movie opens with... Uh, a character that Mackay Pfeiffer plays. Uh, he's You see that he's dead or on the verge of death. And it flashes back to Christian Bale. In some racist. Cla- classy restaurant. Mackay Pfeiffer and his friends walk in. And Christian Bale is like... It's like the most stereotypical... <laughs> hey, I've never actually like encountered a racist white person... In person, it's, but this it's is what very I'm... forced racism. It's like, yo, hey, yo, there's no you know, thirty ounces here. Like, <laughs> you know what? Maybe back in the early two thousands, a drunk, rich asshole kid at at a place like that might might say some fucked up shit. It's not what he's saying. It's just how it's. It's just, how he's saying it's it. It's the performance. Like, it's... He... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're you're right because like when a when a white person wants to be more racist, it's gonna be more. If it if the uh, if it was done well, it would actually be scary to watch. Like, oh my god! I yes. Can't. But he would just like, hey, yo, there's no chronic in here. It wasn't arrogant. <laughs> it was just silly. Like, enough. he was not intimidating at all. Which I guess in the scene they make it seem like, oh, like, he's not like a real racist person. This is like that that arrogance is unmatched. Like, there's no. This is like a kid playing Call of Duty on Xbox, like type and forcefully of saying this shit, like. But it's also attributed to, like, man, was Christian Bale just still learning how to do a good American accent? Or was, like... There's no chronic in here, homeboy. Because <laughs> you watch Harsh Times. You watch Harsh Times, and even though it's such a goofy movie, like, you still believe his character. I know. This is just, like, oh, he doesn't know. Hello. So, basically, he's being racist. The other guy makes fun of him, puts a little yeah. clan hood on him. They made out of a napkin. Everyone's <laughs> laughing. Um, Christian Bale's character... I think his name is Walter Wade Jr. He gets embarrassed, and then it's implied he kills the dude, right? But so did you say Walter Wade Jr.? Is this, is Walter this Wade. Happened? Is this what happened to the crippled kid after his dad died? Oh, my God. Walter Wade Jr. And Flynn. He pretty much, he's just like, hey, you can't touch me. I'm rich, whatever. Like, that's the whole thing. Don't touch me. My dad has money. Yeah, essentially. He's literally just Bruce Don't Wayne. Don't touch me, you swine. <laughs> he's Bruce Wayne. If he never got, uh, his parents never got killed. And then affluent bastard. I feel like he gets arrested like two or three times on just some bullshit just to keep him in holding. But you know they can't get him for the murder charge. That's the whole plot <laughs> of the movie, right? There's a woman that witnessed the whole thing. No, <laughs> she's not coming forward. Uh, what else happens? Well, she fingered him at the scene, and this is a direct quote from the movie. I pointed him out to you. I fingered that son of a bitch, and I Ooh, got him kinky. She literally said she fingered him at the scene. Let's go in chronological order. And, uh, basically what happens is... Samuel L. Jackson, you know, a.k.a. Iceberg Slim comes through. Looking at the bartender, she's, like, acting all inconspicuous, but very conspicuous. And she's got blood on her chin... Because, uh, well, you'll find out later why. <laughs> so he goes over there and starts uh, forcing her to talk instead of smooth talking like Chef should. And, uh, That's true. Basically. That's why it took the whole movie, because he didn't right. smooth talk her. I mean, if this guy was a real, like, manipulator, man, this should have been, like, one conversation and done. So... <laughs> You're basically right. fucking you know she's like oh yeah I saw it oh, and she runs away and you know the kid gets arrested gets bonded out because you know smooth, well he knocks him out uh, smooth man decides to punch him in the yeah, face yeah. <laughs> and you think at that point that's the part of the movie where oh he's not gonna be a cop but no he gets all fine after that well the guy said oh you're off the, you're but off but he the wasn't thing. though no I know that's weird. He's like, oh yeah, and, oh yeah. His uh, yeah. the police chief or whatever is played by uh, Mr. Kruger from Seinfeld. 
<laughs> Ironically, you never see him again after the beginning of the movie. That's true. You see him like once or twice. Maybe he died after like two years or something. Two, I don't... two years later. So. A New York minute. There's no specific character, but I feel like most of the white people in this movie are kind of like what Family Guy said white people in a Spike Lee movie are. Like, it's just very... I don't think John Singleton met white people before. <laughs> Cookie cutter. <laughs> There's the one cop that says, like, you corn, know what? cornbread or something, and he's like, hey, man, cool with that. He's like, oh, what did I do wrong? This is the direct replica, but I like the... Not replica, this is like the direct, like... Reciprocal of white people making movies with token black people, and they just have like generic what white people think black behavior is. Yeah, I mean it goes this both is ways. The opposite. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Frankie, Frankie, the 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 Diane's brother. All the two Italian the brothers. Fake, <laughs> the fake Italian. We'll get, real to Italian. we'll get to that. But. Fucking steroid fat ass. Okay, so <laughs> your favorite character in the movie, and I feel like we're the the fucking not psycho anything. Puerto Rican is so, my favorite guy. There's like two years later, it's uh, it opens with like some drug bust, right? Some like Puerto Ricans, I guess, and <laughs> so it's like this foot chase, right? He's chasing this dude across his apartment. He tackles him, whatever, and I guess it's implied like, oh, this guy watching him in the window, he's like the. Uh, the drug kingpin or whatever. Yeah. And he's kind of just watching it go down. And they know it's him, but they can't do anything. He's just sitting in the window in, like, the most flamboyant, tight, little white satin shirt, eating spaghetti. Just, like, staring at him. Like, like so unintimidating. Yeah. And, of course, Shaft, he's just like, hey, give me that basketball. He tosses it up there. He knocks his spaghetti all over him. And he's just like, fuck. Like, he just looks pissed. And every time this dude walks in the movie, his arms are hanging down like a T-Rex or something. Look how he walks. Why is he walking like that? He's like a C-Rex. <laughs> and like I said, he's just wearing like the skinniest tight-fitting shirts and he's just so unintimidating. But yeah, uh, Peoples Rodriguez, because he takes care of his peoples, that's his name. Yeah. Just, I want you to describe this character a bit. Uh, basically, if you ever met a Puerto Rican at school that won't stop telling you they're Puerto Rican, that's them. That's basically it. This guy is overly loud. He's he's aggressive, but he's like feminine. His his aggressiveness is feminine. And in times where you think he's going to be overly violent, he ends up just like giving in. Like the guy like the Christian Bale character wanted you know, to have the girl killed. Sorry, his name is Peoples Hernandez, not Rodriguez. I'm gonna Hernandez, be Hernandez, he's Mexican. I'm gonna be cancelled now. He's Mexican. So um basically basically this motherfucker, you know wants to work with Christian Bale on getting some money. So he's supposed to pay he's supposed to get paid forty thousand so Christian Bale comes over with these this jewelry that he stole from his dead mother, and he said that he could flip it into forty k, and he wanted to have this witness killed by uh, by peoples. They make it into a whole thing like, oh, I have jewelry. No, I want you to sell for me. Okay, let me do this. Just have so money. It's to begin weird with. because well, you're adding like five minutes of padding to the film because he has to pawn off. The they're jewelry. trying to do that that thing that they do with rap and fucking you know urban movies back in the day where. Everything had to turn into a drug dealing movie. Like, it couldn't just be like a murder for hire movie. No, we gotta do the whole let's glorify drug dealing. So, it's like they added little story elements <laughs> that just got. Like I said, it's like padding, right? Yep. Because there's a scene where Walter Wade's like, okay, let me pay you to uh, find this woman and kill her or whatever. And the guy's like, well, I want you to help me sell drugs, here's my little drug room or whatever, and you're like thinking, okay, so the rest of the movie's gonna be like them working together in some drug enterprise. It never really comes up, right? Ever again. Well, it does. <laughs> yeah, so he, yeah, says, yeah. he says no, leaves, goes to turn in the jewelry, two cops follow him. They mug him. They mug posing him. Posing as muggers. So that way he has to come back and crawl back and say, okay, I don't have any money, so I'll sell your drugs, basically. 
And that's what ends up happening. So, actually, I don't think people knew that the cops were going to mug him. No, I don't think he knew that. They they just knew he had some money on him or jewelry. So Yeah, he believed him. He just like, okay, you got mugged. That's cool. Just as long as you make back the money. Yep. And then he's like, okay, now you got to sell it. And you're like, oh, so the movie's going to show him selling drugs. No, that's, no. why include all this? So then we cut to him, people's taking a shit in front of... <laughs> Christian Bale. He's not joking. You hear the plop. It'll be even Steven in about six, eight months. So, basically, his little brother hands him over the bag, and he goes, okay, you know, 200 eighths, 100 gram, or 100 dollar grams, whatever, you know, basically cocaine prices, and hands him this package, and says, okay, you pay me off in about a year. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go back a bit. So they originally <laughs> met in prison. Well, they met in the county jail. So yeah, they both yeah. got arrested at the same time. And they're establishing like, oh, Walter Wade's kind of like he may be a rich kid, but he's a badass because this dude's like, give me your shoes. And but he's they like, they bond because they were arrested about Shaft. That's true. You get your taxi vacia. You want a cigarette? You were having so much fun with this dude's voice <laughs> and the fact hilarious. that he's like a knockoff Scarface. It is This terrible. movie does have a lot of cartoony aspects to it, and I think <laughs> I'd like to imagine it's on purpose. Otherwise, yeah. it's just a really badly directed and written movie. But yeah, a lot of like the shootout scenes in this movie looked like Virtua Cop for <laughs> Sega Saturn or like lethal enforcers for Sega CD. Like all the bad guys were NPCs, right? Like they would stand still and just wait to get shot. Or just go, go back and watch the dude running coming out the corner. That whole scene again. Everyone that gets shot is a dummy. Yeah, and it's terribly edited in. Maybe it wasn't meant to be in HD, so they're like nobody's gonna notice this. That's but possible. The car chases were outrageous. Like I, I liked it because it was so crazy. But once again, I hope it wasn't meant to be taken that seriously because <laughs> it was very entertaining. But yeah, so throughout the movie, Shaft is a. Uh, Trying to get answers from this Diane lady, the witness at the bar. And he must have visited her mom's house like five times in the movie. Because I swear I saw him like knocking like, is Diane there? Is Diane there? Like eight different times. And I think by like the third time, her two fat stereotypical Italian brothers was like, Hey, you leave my sister alone! <laughs> Mikey! Yeah, it was Mikey and I forgot the other guy's name, but... Now, if they were real Italians, that bitch would have been screaming. They looked like... Non-stop. They came off the set of, like, Trailer Park Boys mixed with, like, Jerky Boys characters. I, I don't know how to describe it, but... It, just... it looks like middle-aged Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> but... They were, like, intimidating and un intimidating at the same time. I can't describe it. They look like they, you know, fuck you and then, like, feed you pasta after... So, oh yeah, Buster Rhymes is in this movie. And he sucks at acting. I think... Miserably. He's Jamaican, but I think he forgot that his character is supposed to be Jamaican. So, <laughs> it's like, he, uh... You fucked up my apartment! And then he'll say something and be like, yeah, man. Like, he'll forget, like, oh shit, I'm supposed to be Jamaican. And same thing with the Diane girl. I Maybe it's just me, maybe it's my imagination, but I swear to God, dude, she didn't have an accent for the whole movie and then towards the end of the movie she had like an Italian New Yorker accent. I don't know. Yeah. It wasn't until after Samuel L. Jackson kidnaps her and takes her to Buster Rhymes' apartment. Mm -hmm. And then they're sitting in there and now she's a fucking New Yorker talking. I was in the I was in the street smoking a cigarette and, and he didn't come outside. And the other man, he came out and he had a pole. And he swung the pole. I was, I was so scared I couldn't move my legs. I was just numb. And he came up to me. I didn't know what to do. I just stood there. So instead of killing her, Christian Bale's character doesn't... He just looks at her wallet so he'll know her name. He's like, okay, I know who you are now. Fucking Which Tyler I guess, Durden, bitch ass. Maybe that makes him scarier. I don't know, but... If he's willing to kill one person, why not just kill her? Then in the shootout, his brother gets killed, and all of a sudden, Peoples is crazy, right? Like, he goes into this rage mode. What does he start doing to show how angry he is? Stabbing his chest with his ice pick. <laughs> you kill me! And it's, like, bloody, dude. It's, like, a, <laughs> literally, like, a fountain of blood. 
we're both going to die! <laughs> and then he, uh... So you're thinking, okay, he's going straight to Shaft. He's going to kill him. He goes back home, right? Or, like, so one of his apartments or whatever, and Kristen Bale's there. And he's, like, stabbing Kristen Bale. He's like, because of you, my brother's dead. And I'm like, why did you make a stop? I thought you were on your way to, like, follow Shaft. Like, why was that necessary? And then they don't interact for the rest of the movie. Right? Like, the class. No, of- no, I like how Christian Bale's an arrogant prick until the end of the movie. We'll talk about that. Yeah. So that happens, and then the climax of the film is, uh, there's, like, a little... Like, he kidnaps Diane, right? People's kidnap yeah. Diane. After Shaft finally finds her, and she's gonna testify. And he's... They're at the docks, and he's holding a knife to her or whatever, while stabbing <laughs> himself as well, I guess. And... Oh, my God. Uh, he's like, alright, Shaft's like, let's fight man-to-man, whatever, hand-to-hand. And, of course, it turns into a stupid little quick draw thing. Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> Shaft wins the quick draw, but when he shoots people's dude falls over like a golden eye NPC, right? Like his arms like uh, this. <laughs> it's like, like the that. weirdest it's just, death. Yeah, no, that's seen. fucking weird. Oh, we got some quick draw shit. What the hell? He is an NPC. Who dies like that? You asked me what my favorite quote is. There's so yeah. many fucking quotes in this movie that are hilarious. I think Kristen Bell going, going, I, I, <laughs> I. I I mean shit. Something about oh yeah, the white people dialogue is hilarious. Or people saying, "I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put it up your ass" or whatever. Just <laughs> literally fake Scarface quotes. Yeah. <laughs> There's some like lingo or like slang terms from yeah, the early 2000s that you don't cops? hear anymore. Us in New York, then they call cops Jakes. Okay. I think they still do that. Mm. Um. Man, what else? What else? There's, there's a bunch of funny shit. I like the scene uh, earlier in the movie, like I said, when the white cop, he's arresting some dude, and he calls him Cornbread. And it's not even provoked. Like, he just says it just so they're like, oh, let's show a white guy being racist. But Shaft is like, hey, cool with that shit. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Shaft. And, this, and he's like yelling at the dude, calling him a Nazi, and uh, the perp or whatever, which is like, hey, thanks, Chef. Like, thanks for defending me. He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, he just <laughs> has a Samuel Jackson moment. Like the way you handle that, bro. Shut the fuck up. And the dude's face is just like, oh, like, I'm sorry. This <sighs> this is a very Samuel Jackson-esque role. You know, this is him being like, haven't you seen my movies? <laughs> you know? Juice? You ain't never seen my movies? Juice? Deep blue sea, a fucking shark ate me. How does the movie end? Like, fucking New Jack City is like the same formula. So Walter Wade Jr.'s. It's like I'm watching Nino Brown walk up the courtroom stairs and that old man comes and yeah, he kills him. Is that literally what happens? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I, I was saying it's like a reverse Bruce Wayne thing because in Batman Begins... Um, before Bruce Wayne went through his ninja training or whatever and he went back to Gotham, his uh, parents' killer was finally... <laughs> they were considering letting him out on parole because he had info about the mob or something. And yeah. Bruce Wayne's like, well, no, someone has to stand up for my parents. He had a gun. And, of course, one of the <laughs> Falcone's uh, assassins or mobsters or whatever... Falcone says hi! Pff, shoots him. I'm like, it's very reminiscent. It's ironic to see the same thing happen to Bruce Wayne, basically, because he really is just, like, a shitty version of Bruce Wayne in this movie. <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, very shitty someone, version. uh... I, I don't know if they ever said... If I'm she's, pretty sure it's the mother yeah, of the, the Mackay Pfeiffer character. Throughout the movie, you see her occasionally, and Chap's like, it's okay, we'll get him, we'll get him. And, uh, she's like, oh, I know, I know, justice will be served. Like, she's like, yeah, I know. She knew she was gonna kill him. Um, and everyone's Good. chanting, like, like let, <laughs> let her, her go! go. Yeah. They, they should have. I don't know why I should get arrested for this. I'm Saving sure, the court money. I'm sure if there was a follow-up, they'd say, like, oh, she got out on some technicality. I'm sorry. I don't know if I'd kill him like that. I mean, she if she had access to him while he was out, she could have hired someone to torture him. I was going to say, she should have waited to see if he was, like, acquitted or not. Because he could have just went to jail. But maybe she thought... I mean, she could have put money in the prison and had him fucking, you know, really tortured, but... Mm. <laughs> I guess she gets the satisfaction of killing him. So, but. I feel like the movie should have ended with that, but it's like this goofy little scene where uh, 
Shaft and the original Shaft are going to do some job, and then Buster Rhymes' character is like, "Yo, man, my life sucks. Y'all shot up my apartment. My car's destroyed." <laughs> And they're like, look, we got you a new car and everything's fine. And he's just kind of like... It's almost almost like they wanted him to be like the Chris Tucker in this movie, right? Or like the wacky sidekick. Buster Rhymes is not a good actor. But he only gets like a few lines in the movie. So it's like, wait, where was he for the rest? I don't don't understand his purpose because everything could have been done without him. I don't remember. There was zero reason he had I know that they stayed in his apartment with the girl with Diane. But like, who was he again? Was he a former cop? Was he his friend? I don't remember. And in early 2000s fashion, everybody from HBO was in this fucking movie. You got people from The Wire, you got some other people. You got Elizabeth Banks in the movie for about ten seconds. Yeah, that was weird. She was at the <laughs> restaurant, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot she was there. Yeah, it was a fucking weird mix of people. Because uh, a few years later, she's in Spider-Man as uh, oh. Betty Brant working at the Daily Bugle. Very strange. You know, I never found her attractive. Do you remember what her hair looked like in that movie? It was like a black, like, bowl-cut Karen. But it was weird. <laughs> That's how she looked in the comics, so they wanted it to be accurate. Oh. I, I mean, people thought she was, like, the hottest thing in Happy Gilmore. I don't know. Are you sure that was her? Ah, uh, 1,000%. She basically is getting sexually harassed the entire Happy movie. Happy Gilmore, IMDb. Opening, IMDb. I think it was another generic white woman. <laughs> this generic white woman is the same nope. generic. Julie Bowen. Come on! That's not her. <laughs> These <laughs> white women look all the same. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to think if we missed anything. I just, I know People's Hernandez. Yeah. I know People's Hernandez was the highlight of the movie. John Singleton is hilarious with his white, uh, his white characters. Mm. That's funny in the Spike Lee characters. Spike Lee makes everyone look like a fucking KKK member. So. <laughs> It's pretty bad. You know there's a follow-up to <laughs> this Shaft movie. Like a sequel to this Shaft. Which is funny because this movie is a sequel to the original Shaft. So there's the original Shaft. I want you to follow me, okay? The original Shaft. And the name of the movie is Shaft. This movie came out in 2000. It's called Shaft. And then the modern version, which came out a few years ago, is called Shaft. So you got three movies in the same universe, each called Shaft. Who's in the modern one? <laughs> it's still the same. It's a follow-up. Who made this one? The one we're watching, we watched. No, the follow, because John sure. Singleton's been dead for I a while. I don't know. But it's, it's Samuel Jackson again, but I think they make it so that the other Shaft is actually his father, not his uncle. Like, they mess with the story. At least that's why I gather from the trailer. And I think it's like his son now, or something. So it's like three generations yeah. of Shaft. I'm very disappointed I did not see one Morris Chestnut. I did not see one Lawrence Fishburne. Omar, I, Omar Epps? Tyrese? Well, I'm just talking about, uh, I'm making fun of, uh... I thought you were just talking about... What is about that movie? Boy, Boys in the Hood. That's the first John Singleton I was movie. just thinking of prevalent early 2000s black actor. Omar Epps. No. No pretty, no pretty boys. <laughs> I guess Morris Chestnut was the pretty boy in that movie. Hmm. I know him I from, don't like uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., though. He's weird. I know weird. him from Kick-Ass. He was a cop in that movie. Yeah. I don't know if it was the first or second one. I forgot. They re there was a really terrible movie I saw with him. It was like some fucking little... It was like a kid movie. Okay. And it was like a basketball movie. I don't know if it had a little Bow Wow or if it was a different Like one. Mike? Is that it? That's Is that the, a Morris Chestnut? That's the little Bow Wow basketball movie. Does it have him in it? I don't know. I so let's, let's close on this Shaft chapter. Did you like the movie? Yes. I've hilarious. been wanting to show you this movie for like weeks, but just... Hey, Samuel L. Jackson was not the right pick. If if you were going for like okay, who would you have picked in the year two thousand to play? Who uh, would I have picked? Yeah, a womanizing, suave black man. <sighs> who would I pick? Who's still masculine these days? But in the year two thousand. In the year two thousand, I probably would have picked. Um, I'm thinking like what came out then. I. Personally, I would have picked... I was going to joke and say Mike Epps. Was he just coming off next Friday, or was that a few years after that? <laughs> Imagine him as Shaft. <laughs> no, he's too, he's too like, yeah. funny. Yeah, obviously. He, you wouldn't believe it. He'd be making you like be laughing and shit. You wouldn't believe anything he said. Mm. Come on, bitch, help me out. 
No, I, I would I'd love to see Terry Crews play Shaft. I think he'd be terrifying. Look he up, was... look up Weebay from The Wire. He's got the best meme ever. Or GIF. You think he'd be a good chef? Yeah. Is it him cupping his mouth or whatever? Yes, yes. Or Wood Harris. Is that? <laughs> him, or, him or Wood Harris. Okay. We, You know what? We didn't th- say Idris Elba. I feel like everyone... Nah, that's too, too popular. <laughs> Wasn't he like... I think he was voted like top sexiest man in America or something. I guess okay. so. Yeah, I he, guess. He looks like a pit bull, so... He was uh, <laughs> rumored to play James Bond for like a decade, but that kind of dropped. Anyways, <laughs> this is a fun movie. I think we need to... This went with the Ugh. theme of like... You're always showing me, you know, urban films. I'm always showing you Christian Bale films, so this kind of fit both. <laughs> there are a few more Christian Bale movies I'm going to make you watch, but oh, yeah, we need to review Harsh Times very soon. <laughs> There's some interviews of Christian Bale where he's talking about, like, Batman and yep. these other, like, Christopher Nolan movies and... um, I, I forget what else he was... American Psycho and stuff. <laughs> but then he'll be like, there were many movies I'm not too proud of in the early 2000s. <laughs> and, like, I wonder if he's referring to, like, this in Harsh Times. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Because he's, like, a very... He's, like, a British actor, you know. He takes his craft very seriously. So he probably looks at this as, like... You're fucking unprofessional! <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. But you can't... You're walking in front of my lights going, la di da di da He said that. Then why the fuck are you walking right through? Ah, oh, da 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 da, like this in the background. What the fuck is it with you? Okay, I want you to pretend you're Peoples Hernandez and then tell people, like, okay, make sure to tune in for Seek of the Dam. <clears throat> I gotta be him? Yeah, I want you to lead us out as Peoples Hernandez. You gotta do his, like, body language, too, like a flamboyant T Rex. <sighs> Yeah, this is hard to do. Because I don't look like this motherfucker. You don't, thankfully. Okay. What am I telling these people? I don't know, just watch the channel and our content. Okay. I tell you what, you don't have to sell my cocaine. But, you come back here every week. You watch my channel. Yeah. You a hard sell, man. You a hard sell. That's literally what he says when he refuses to sell the cocaine. Yeah. You are our cell. You are our cell, man. <laughs> All right. Come back, motherfucker. That was a mix of Samuel L. Jackson. How did he scream when he found out his brother got, got shot? 